In the last episode of Raven Heli into Grandmaster, we played two really cool games against Protoss. We also did get our first loss, but we learned a lot this time. I'm ready to go all the way, win all the games, and get closer to Master League. Let's go. Ah, we got a Zerg. Perfect. Guys, in the last episode, I was really ready to play against a Zerg because I was excited to test my theory that I could go up to five bases fast, bunker down the map with planetaries, and then pop off with mass ravens. Now, we did only get Protoss players. We, we kind of still got to do it, though, and it worked out. Now, against Zerg. I think if we don't get cheesed, at least we might even have a better opportunity of doing so. So let's go. We're playing against Rock Solid. Now, like I said, if you guys don't remember, the last episode we got our first loss and it was the earliest loss we've ever had in a challenge. So that's a little bit of a rough sign. But at the same time, um, I feel like we can overcome it. Like at some point, I think there was a challenge. I want to say it was the Penguin Brothers where we also lost against a 4.3k Terran. But then we actually still managed to climb to GM really fast. So maybe it was just a one-off. Um, it is true that his builder was insanely good against ours. So I'm not demotivated at all. I'm still ready to accept this challenge and go to the max. Now I'm trying the weird gas timing again. Because I, I felt like my build order has been a little bit weird. The, the builds just don't work out well if you don't make a Reaper or a Marine. I don't know. It's just, just a tearing thing, guys. Um, so here I'm going to do the weird gas first timing again. Normally you make 15 gas when you go for a gas first. Now I did a 16 gas. And then we're going to see. If you do enjoy the challenge, make sure to subscribe to the channel, guys. Don't miss out any videos. Currently I'm running Ravens to Grandmaster, which is this one. Raven Hellion and Mass Goes to Grandmaster. Uh, both challenges that are going to be very difficult. And I'm very excited to see if we can make it happen. Make sure to not miss out on the journey. Turn on the notifications when you subscribe as well. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go for a scout here. That's a... That's a suspicious good luck and fun timing. Uh, I have to admit, a little bit late. But sometimes it doesn't have to mean anything. Actually, there was an episode. I'm not quite sure what challenge it was in. I think it was maybe in the Cheese Grand Finale. Cheese 2 Round 1 Grand Finale. Where we played against Genies. And he typed good luck and fun at like 2 minutes. And I was like, oh, that's suspiciously cheesing me. But then we found out he literally missed the first two minutes of the game. And he was just like AFK. Okay, this guy just has a normal hatch first. though, So we have nothing to worry about. Now, let's see. I could keep my SCV on their side of the map. I could also... Now, I'm actually going to send my heli straight across the map to scout. Like I always talk about against Zerg, it's relatively easy to stabilize early on. Like heli and scouter every... every yeah, pretty much any... Zergling count. Um, Roach is obviously a different story. Roaches would be very hard for this show because I don't have a bunker and stuff. Uh, not yet, at least. Now, I'm still going to go for the 3cc style. I just want to know if my macro raven idea is going to work out as well um, as I had hoped it does. I'm actually going to start these Hellions first. I'll just delay this base for a little bit. Um, I wanted to make it fast, but I don't want to die to something crazy. Like I said, I really want to go full win today. So I'm just going to make these Hellions fast, get a scout off, and then get my third after that. Probably get this gas as well. I know my third is going to be delayed by a decent amount, but I actually think it's fine. Because uh, my plan is to make, I would say, six Hellions. And then after that, skip Hellions for a while to get a ton of, uh, of CCs in particular i want to get up to five cc's i don't know yet if that is going to be the magic number but i feel like it should be a really good amount of command centers and mostly because that means i will have three pfs and i will be able to survive forever okay there's no third hatch here guys Oof! please be a third here oh no i really don't want to get cheesed with this that's going to be so difficult i want to get my macro macro vibe going you know i'm actually gonna right click this oh yeah we're getting cheesed 100% fat, big fat cheese. Um, it could actually be Mutalisks. I hope this is not Nidus. Um, yeah, I mean, this is gonna, this is looking really rough already. Like, I'm not going to have enough anti-air for Mutas. I'm also not going to be able to defend Roaches pretty well. So what my perfect scenario here is, is that me scouting everything he's doing stops him from doing the cheese, if that makes sense. Now, I'm going to run by these Hellions. I feel like this is actually the only opportunity I have to really defend the cheese is by doing enough damage um, so that I don't have to defend the cheese. This is going to be really hard because he does have four queens at the front. But we'll see. Yeah, I actually can't. Hmm, I'm starting to get a little bit scared here, guys. Though, if this is not a Nidus, 
I will be able to defend Mutalisk with, with turrets, of course. Like, that is a, a thing I'm allowed to make. Uh, I saw someone, by the way, just for clarity, I saw someone say that I should be allowed to make turrets and planetaries and stuff. Well, obviously, I am allowed to make those, right? Like, this is not, uh, you know, those are not units. So, I can make those as much as I want. Now, let's see. I'm actually, I'm actually going to do a bit of a crazy move here. Oh, I wanted to... I don't know why he pulled the Zerglings. That's kind of crazy. I wanted to distract the Queens... But I guess... Um, oh, no. No, 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 no. Ah, I didn't want that to be a uh, orbital. Okay, so this looks like Mutas to me. He's also making more and more links. Okay. I'm not gonna have my PF at my third now. That's actually rough. I was really intending for that to be a PF. Now, at least... I mean, I can scan his main. Actually, scanning his main is fine because I have enough minerals. Yeah, it is obviously a Spire. Now... I guess my only answer is just to make a lot of turrets. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot of turrets. I think besides that, I don't really have an answer. I'm gonna run by these Hellions again. He's losing his links for no reason. Right now, this is a critical time, and you can always abuse this against Zerg. He is spending his larva making mutas right now. So if I'm fast enough, I could potentially hit... Well, all of his larva spent on mutas and not on Zerg links. Oh, I was just a little bit too late. Oh, that was incredibly close. You saw that? Still gonna get a lot of drones, though, which is nice. Or well, not a crazy amount of drones, but... Good enough, honestly. Could be worse. Let's put it that way. Could be worse. Yeah. Now, I do have to make a ton of turrets. I'm actually gonna get the uh, the range upgrade for them, too. I feel like that could be something that's gonna help me out. I know it's crazy uh, to make range like that, but... Uh, yeah, I gotta do what you gotta do, guys. Now, against this, I'm definitely gonna make mass ravens more than mass hellions because um yeah i'm all, all i can do with my hellions is run them around basically now the third placement is very good he's not really getting anything done so far which is great he's gonna drop one auto turret there keep it safe like he doesn't he didn't actually manage to make a lot of mutas which is good um let's see yeah he has four bases already huh Probably doesn't have links, if I had to guess. Most of the time, they will make mutas and then just make mass drones because you don't have map control. And that's exactly what it's going to do. So I am getting in here at the perfect timing, which is great. Now I want to make an armory so I can actually get uh, plus one armor. Uh, I'll get a double armory, actually. Why not? Okay, now this is going to be a PF. Now, it does suck that I don't have my PF here because I would be able to test my theory. But I still think uh, it's looking pretty fine. I could actually make a fake bunker as well. Not How about we do that? Get a fake bunker down. Making three ravens at a time now. I should be careful because he might um, attack with link mass links at some point. Like if I throw away all my hellions, that could actually be a little bit problematic. Now let's see if we can kill some more drones. Like I've killed a lot of drones so far and you would think it's awesome for me. But Zerg can make drones really fast. So I need to keep the pressure up. At this point, I do think I have more workers than him. Um, I've actually done enough damage, I believe. So that is nice. But uh, I don't want to be fooled in think into thinking I have won this game. Okay, we get attack and armor. There we go, for the ground. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. We've gotten four bases up. I feel pretty safe, actually. because Mostly because it's not roaches. I do feel pretty safe. Probably can use another turret here. Get building armor as well. And I think at this point I could probably start... Uh, towards blue flame. Like, get a, you know, start getting blue flame now. That could be good as well. Especially because he's still on Zerglings. Let's see. Well, he's, he, I feel like he's just going to play mass mutas. Because he's still making more gases. Now, these Hellion runbys are doing all the work for me so far. And then at some point... Wait, actually, where are his units, though? And there's only three mutas here. Um, wait, he has one armor? Yeah. Oh, that's annoying. My three aliens don't one-shot them anymore because he has one armor. Okay, so has he really spent all of his time just making more and more? I didn't see more mutas. That was three mutas I saw, guys. Do I actually have an opportunity here to do some damage? Let's see. Also, uh, it does seem like the games against Protoss are way harder than against Zerg. So I might just be confusing, like, what they have, you know? And um, here we go. <laughs> just a casual six auto turrets dropping out, guys. It's no big deal, really. All right, there's nothing in my base still. Oh my god, the auto turrets, guys. <laughs> the rapid fire auto turrets are insane. Holy crap. This is the strongest it, look it has looked yet. Holy, that is sick. All right, guys, Ravens against Zerg. I know I had a good start to the game, 
got damage done. Mutas did nothing. But the Ravens against Zerg here are looking quite promising. Now, I do have to highlight, guys. I'm not going to pretend I crushed him that hard in a normal game. This guy, he made four Mutas and nothing else. He was on a hive. He has Adrenal Glance, 2-2, two, two, Hydra upgrades, was going to go up to Lurker. So he was incredibly greedy. You can look at his money. This guy could have had 20 more Mutas, okay? So let's not be fooled into thinking the TVZ is going to be easy. But this game did make me believe there's a lot of potential here. Like, especially if I get a PF here, PF here, PF here. Send out Hellions non-stop, get to a really good Raven count. My upgrades, I was able to afford everything pretty well, right? Three Starport Raven is producing. Double upgrades here. Upgrades on the eBay. This actually looks fantastic. All right, well, first win of the day. Hopefully one of many to come. Let's keep going. Ah, another Protoss. All right. I, I was Secretly, I was hoping to only get Zergs in this episode so we could really test our theory to the max. Uh, of that 5cc raven style but we got a protoss um and that does make me a little bit more scared but i do feel a little bit refreshed i got some new ideas for the ravens and i think um if we get to play another good macro game with mass ravens i'm gonna feel pretty good about it like if you remember last episode when i was really just destroying next side by dropping 12 auto turrets next to them uh that is the kind of stuff i would love to do again now uh, I'm going to stick to my formula, what I've learned. The most important thing that I've learned so far against Protoss is just that you have to be really aggressive with your Hellions. And more important than anything, you need to scout what they're doing. And if they all in me, I need to do damage back. Because if I don't do any damage and they get to all in me with like mass blink stalkers, holding that is going to be near impossible. Now, obviously, I don't know what this guy is going to do yet. It's a pretty big map. I do feel like Protoss has a lot of scary stuff that can happen, right? Like a lot of you have mentioned, what on earth am I going to do against an Oracle or stuff like that? So that is something that could prove problematic, but uh, we won't know until we see it. I think my answer against Oracle would probably be to just make an eBay and get turrets out and then maybe counter with the Raven, do damage. But then, yeah, once again, if they do get a little Phoenix, this is going to be rough. Now, that's what I'm wondering about. You guys are wondering about the Oracle. I'm wondering what the hell am I going to do against Phoenixes. Because if they go Phoenix from the start, they can literally just hunt all my Ravens down. I would have to hide over, like, I would say a clump of turrets. Like, not just one turret, because Phoenixes can easily fly over one turret. I would have to hide over a clump of, like, four turrets with my Raven, which honestly gives me, like, tower defense vibes. But, uh, yeah, we'll see, guys. We'll see when the problem arises. Right now, we don't have to worry about it yet. Let's just make sure our scouting is completely on top. Now, this guy hasn't probe scouted us. Cheeses are also going to be very rough. That was actually the first thing I was worried about myself. Like, I I think I mentioned in the first episode, maybe in, like, the intro. Wait, that's a forge. Okay. That is that is definitely the most comfortable tech I could have seen, I think. Um, yeah, I mentioned in the intro something like... I will probably have to switch to phase two because if someone proxy gates me, what am I going to do? Like tickle their units with Hellions, you know, uh, that's going to be a little bit of a rough one. Now, I've, I've, I thought he was maybe going for a fast twilight or something, but he actually went for a forge first. And if he's going to play that passive, well, he's going to get plus one instantly. Um, I can't be fooled by this because in the past, what a really fast forge can mean is just like, Glaives with plus one, for example. Because Glaives with plus one means they two-shot your workers and your marines. So that is totally a build this could be. It seems very macro, but it could totally be one of those sneaky all -ins. So I'm actually going to keep my SCV around. And I'm going to send my Hellions across as well. At least to check the natural. Because one thing I want to see is if he's going to take the gases. That's a, a tip I can give you, Terrence, as well. If you scout against Protoss, a really good thing to scout is just how many gases they have on their natural. Because you'll be able to tell if they're going to go for Colossus or, like, something gas expensive, you know, Fast Storm or Robo Bay. And if they don't have the gases, there's a chance they will just spam a million Zealots against you uh, or Adepts. So keeping that in mind would be good. Now, this person that's probably going to die, which is nice. I have good enough micro to take care of that. I'm going to get some damage on my Hellions, though, um, which is unfortunate. I'm going to repair these up, and then I'm going to go across. This is usually... If I would play a macro game, this is ideally when I cut Hellion. So I can actually afford my third CC, right? Um, I'm actually going to get my Corvus Reactor. Corvid Reactor. I was going to what it's called. Corvid Reactor. There we go. Okay. Get my gases. Kind of running low on money a little bit here. I'm actually going to go with six Hellions. Um, I am suspecting that he's probably going to do the all-in, to be fair. And my build could either be really good or really bad against it. 
if it's zealots, it's probably pretty good. If it's adepts, I don't know. I imagine it could probably still be pretty good, but Glaive adepts do a lot of damage against Hellions too, so. Let's see. There's a gateway and an immortal. Okay, I'm gonna do some damage here. Because he has no gases. Oh, nice. That was big. Okay, let's make sure to... Like, the immortal would actually kill all of my Hellions, so... Pussy? What the hell? Well, am, I, am I supposed to fight with my Hellions? What does that even mean? Get your shit together, Jot. I'm no, I'm not. What, what, what the hell does that even mean? Okay. I killed his workers instead of fighting his immortal like a man, guys. That's what I did. I'll do it again if he's gonna challenge me. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure that's the first time someone has said that to me in StarCraft. Maybe you guys have heard that before, but I've actually definitely not heard that before. Now... Uh, what is my next step? Like, he's on two bases, so I think my theory that he's probably wanting to all-in me is correct. Two immortals now. Hmm. I actually... I'm gonna go for that second star port. I'm still not quite sure about my build orders, of course, but... I think a ra extra ravens here... Oh! I'm gonna play like a girl again, guys. Look. Probably gonna be upset again, if I have to guess. <laughs> oh, he picked some of them up. That is a good move. I mean, I'm also just gonna go into the main. Let's go. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. I, w I was completely correct. This is a lot of freaking gateways, guys. Okay, I'm gonna kill more and more probes. I'm actually gonna kill pretty much all of them. Now, he is here already. I can actually disable both of these. Oh, the plays, guys. <laughs> what an absolute weirdo. What? Okay, well, I mean... <laughs> in this game, my build looked incredibly strong, which I'm happy with. Um, yeah, this guy just did a very greedy all-in, basically. Um, it's actually a small tip I can give you guys, is that very often when Protoss players all-in you, it's very easy to sit back and defend. But in reality, this guy made no units just so he could afford all of his gateways. That's a lot, a lot of time where they hit so hard as well. Like, it's a greedy all-in, they skip on early game defense and then they mess you up. And stuff like Hellions, Hellion Drop can counter those really hard, and that's what happened here. Like, this guy... How many probes did he lose here? He lost 13 probes to that first attack. And that already put me in a really good spot because he wouldn't even be able to afford the rest of the units. Well, that's two wins. Very quickly, very well done. Let's keep it going. Oh, we got a random. Okay. Is that our first random play? No, I think our first player we ever played against was random. Obviously, that was still a lot lower MMR than now. I think we just broke 4.2. We might be approaching 4.3 even. And I'm going to be very excited once we reach Masters. I feel like... It's kind of weird to say that because I got absolutely dunked on by a, a mid-diamond player in the last episode. But I do feel like Masters is usually when the when the challenge really begins. Like, all the games are going to be hard. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. Now, we're not quite there yet. What can a random player bring to the table? The scariest thing will still just be cheese. Um, so I'm going to scout early. There's actually, I give this tip a lot, but I like giving you guys tips anyway. Against random... Uh, the, basically, the way you treat them is you usually just do a Reaper expand. Now, in this case, I'm obviously going to expand without Reaper because I'm not allowed to make one. And then you scout as if they were a Terran, which means you scout at 17. Um, and that is the earliest you need to scout to deal with anything from all the races combined, if that makes sense. So if you scout at 17... Oh, I mean, he's already going to scout me. I don't even have to now. That's perfect. But he might be proxying me still. So I have to keep that in mind. But yeah, normally you scout at 17 because with a 17 scout, you'll be able to deal with anything that anyone of any race can throw at you with a Reaper expand. Uh, and that's why I think playing against random is pretty comfortable as Terran. Now for me, it's a bit of a different story because I'm only allowed to make Hellions. So it's probably not quite as comfortable. But uh, yeah, this guy revealed this race pretty fast. So that's nice. I, I do feel a little bit sus suspicious. So I'm going to make my CC on the high ground. I'm not sure if this is something I would usually recommend. Uh, I think it's pretty good to learn how to defend cheeses and stuff with a regular low ground expansion. But in this case, um, yeah, I feel a little bit suspicious. I can only make Hellions and I'm just going to play it extra safe. Now, that was a really early scout. So, I'm just wondering because if you play random, your biggest advantage is quite literally the other person not knowing your race. So, it feels like you kind of throw it out of the window a little bit by scouting that early. I mean, I, I feel like you guys probably agree with me. Um, the, uh, you know, opinions on random are always very mixed. I feel like there's a lot of people that hate it. There's a lot of people that like it extra because the person is making it harder on themselves by playing extra races and it's all fair and stuff. Um, but yeah, like I said, as a Terran, it's perfectly fine. 
Now, I do wonder what this guy's plan is after scouting. I think... Maybe you guys know Hero. A very good pro player. Actually, probably the best pro right now is called Hero. Um, he used to like to do pilot scouting. Like, really early and annoy you. Just... Oh, no. Guys, this is actually a disaster. Um, yeah. Oh, he's, he's not gonna block it? He's not gonna block it. Let's go! Okay, that was, that was about to be a disaster. But he just didn't block it for some reason. Which is really good news for us. Obviously, I don't mind this pro being in my main. I, uh... Yeah, I just wanted to expand here for safety. Not not because I wanted to hide my tech from him. But as I was saying, Hero, he would... You know, scout at 12 or maybe after the pylon really early to annoy you. Send a second probe. You would feel safe because you see the probe is in your vision. But then a second probe would be making like a proxy stargate. Uh, and then you're sad. That's basically what his strategy was. And that's probably because of that era of gameplay is why I'm feeling particularly suspicious here. Now, the one thing that's really nice about these challenges is that I don't really have to choose too much about what units I'm going to make because I already know it. It's kind of... Oh, it is... <gasps> Uh-oh, guys. Is everyone's biggest nightmare coming true? The fastest Oracle ever? Okay, yeah, this is going to be a rough one. Uh, I'm actually going to make a reactive eBay. Uh, and I'm going to counter with these Hellions. Now, the Oracle doesn't have that much energy, so it's going to run out of energy pretty fast. Probably around the time when he leaves me with perfect saturation. Almost, yeah. Should have killed one more. So so greedy. Um, now, can I get turrets out in time? That I don't know. I'm going to try, though. Now, these headings are going to get into the main base. And hopefully, they will do a lot of damage. He didn't get that wall up, which is nice. Let me get these turrets down. Okay. And this is all my counter damage. I actually had perfect amount of gas to make another raven, which is sick. Now, I'm definitely going to be able to multitask this better than my opponent. That is obviously my biggest benefit here. And I probably killed more workers in the end than he did. Now, that doesn't mean my build is good against his, uh, obviously. But I think it's a pretty good start. And we got the turrets up, which is nice. Well, I'm supply blocked a little bit, though. I didn't actually see that coming. Obviously, my build was thrown off. Now, I am going to make four gases really fast. And I'm going to try to keep the pressure on as well. Okay. There's an oracle, but now I actually have a turret, which is really nice. Without this turret, I would literally lose all of my workers. So it is actually fantastic. I could try to snipe it. Doesn't seem very wise, though, so I'm just going to skip doing that. I, I could actually... Guys, call me crazy. But I'm going to... Oh, no. That is so unfortunate. Okay. I was going to go across. This is a really crazy move by him, by the way. Uh, but this could work out perfectly for me. Let's see how this is going to go. Yeah, I'm into the main. Yes, guys. Okay. I'm going to kill all of his workers. And now all I have to do is just survive. I basically... If he had that walled off, it would have been scary. Now is looking really fantastic for us. Here, he's going to be walled in. SFVs are going to come from that side. And the surround is just going to kill him, basically. This is a really nice, you know, turn of events for us. That looked like it could have been really scary. Dude, the auto turret DPS. Oh, my goodness. All right, now there's your answer, guys. Can I beat an Oracle? I can, at least at this MMR. Um, I lost 16 workers over all that, but that's including the end and stuff, which I think I probably lost like seven to the Oracle, which is actually too much. But uh, we won, we won comfortably. We had to use our Hellions to do counter damage to do it, but our decision making was on point. And that's three wins in a row. Let's try to get a fourth one. Only macro. Now, I'm definitely not trusting that. If I do get into a macro game, it would be nice. I don't think we've really played a long macro game. The last episode, we definitely did. Now, not so much. Uh, and I don't mind because I've been winning. If I wouldn't win, I would definitely mind. But uh, We played a protos called only macro, or we're playing him right now. And in my experience, those guys are always lying. Now, you would say it's obvious. But I kind of like giving people the benefit of the doubt, you know? Like I, there, There's like a 6A player called macro player as well. And this guy, only macro... I just I just can't see it, man. If this guy plays macro, I'd actually be surprised. But I would welcome it with open arms. So let's see. Now, this is a very macro map. So if he's an only macro player, this is definitely his jam. I, it's definitely possible that this person could be a cheeser on his main account. And he wants to learn macro games. And that's why he's now just playing macro games. That is actually not something too crazy. I feel like that's something... Maybe I even did that at some point. I feel like I could have. I'm not sure if I actually did. Now, keep in mind, I've been playing this game for like 12 freaking years, so... Um, yeah, I don't quite remember what I did in 2011 on Battle.net. Uh, sorry about that. 
Now this guy is at least not going with a pylon scout, which is more comfortable. Last game would have been really scary if he actually blocked my factory, by the way. Like I would have gotten my Hellions out so much later. Now this looks like a pretty normal scout to me. Now I'm going to scout across as well. A lot of times these days in TVP, I don't even go across to scout. But scouting with these, with these challenge series is super important. And I actually think it's probably one of my strengths. Like if my scouting wasn't so good. Oh, he's going to lose that. Nice. So like if, if he left there, I wouldn't be surprised. Not because he has lost the game, but that's just like... I feel like that's a little bit too much, you know. Uh, but as I was saying, I think scouting and decision making is actually the biggest skill in these challenges. I know a lot of you probably think it could be pure mechanics. But I think with a lot of these challenges, especially like the bomb cloud, and especially with the ghost, I think uh, the biggest asset that I have is just like really fast decision making um, and being good at scouting. Because if I wouldn't scout properly, I would probably lose a bunch of games. Now at this point, I could definitely still win with pure mechanics, don't get me wrong. If I would use my Hellions at 100% activity and just keep going and going, I feel like I would definitely win these games still. Um, but yeah, with the way I want to play, getting my multi-base set up with the Ravens, I definitely need to get a lot of scouting done to make sure I don't die. And it's funny because at this point, I don't even know yet how I would react to a lot of things. It's like, um, you know, in the... Let's see, I think that was the first game of the last episode where I scouted a blink in and I made like three starports. Well, in reality, maybe I wanted more Hellions, stuff like that. Like, I don't even know yet how I'm going to respond to all of the things. But I always say that scouting is good anyway, because what scouting does is it makes your opponent insecure about their build order. Like, if they do an all-in and you scout it, there's a, I would say there's a 25% chance they even just abort the all-in. Um, because they feel like it's not going to work. Ooh, this guy made a stalker first. That is annoying. That is the best possible opener for Protoss against me, for sure. I'm just going to go in. That is... Hmm... I hope he doesn't send a second Stalker. This is actually a really good counter to Hellions in... Uh, I, I want to say regular 1v1. This is obviously a regular regular 1v1, but without the challenge, I mean. Uh, if you play Hellions against Protoss, even if you're allowed to make other units, you kind of get countered by gateway units being sent across. Because you simply... You cannot kill them efficiently at all with, with Hellions. I think in this case, I'm just going to go for it because this is going to be really annoying otherwise. Might be able to get a block... Oh, the micro? Almost. Oh, that's nice. That was really nice, yeah. But this is what I mean. Like, even this is not efficient. And I'm going to lose a lot of my stuff for it. Now, I might be able to... Let's see, you guys can go back. Don't worry about it. I'll allow you to. I do feel like he's microing pretty well. So, this guy might um, be better than the MMR would suggest as well. Like, I, I do have a theory that this could be a person who made, like, a macro account. Like, I feel like so far he is playing pretty well. Like, the micro was good. And uh, the decision to wait in front of my base was also good. For sure. Now, hopefully I can do some damage with these Hellions. Let's see, he doesn't have a full wall. That's really nice. Let's get a few lined up. There's not that many. I only got a few workers so far. Now, I'm mostly going in the main base here. Because I want to know if this is like a 4 gate. He has 3 gate. Oh, he has a Robo Bay. Ah, okay. Hmm... Another thing we have to think about, huh? A Robo Bay opener. All right, then. What the hell are we going to do with the Robo Bay opener, guys? Can Hellions kill a Colossus? Maybe if you have like 5 million, they probably can. Otherwise, um, I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do. Disruptors would be okay. Like, obviously, they can hit my Hellions, but for the most part, I should be able to run away from those. And I can also disable a Colossus, which is a big thing. Hmm... I saw a war prism, right? I'm not being crazy. I'm pretty sure I saw a war prism leave his base. Let's see if it ever shows up. I, I'll, I'll be honest, and I also don't know the timing on a freaking Colossus drop or whatever. So it's very possible that... Um, well, that there's no way you would have a Colossus in the prism, actually. That, for that, it was definitely too fast. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now, how am I counter this, guys? I have no idea. I can actually just run him around the map. If he wants to keep following me, that is actually fine with me. Um, I'll split these Hellions, actually. Yeah, I mean, this is fine. If he wants to keep chasing me forever, that is probably the best outcome of this. Let's see, let's run into his third base. And I think my biggest hope here is that um, he doesn't pay attention to his drop while I'm running into his base. Okay, so it does have these. Yeah. I'm going to go for a triple starport. 
here I, I wish I would be able to make a Viking or something. Hmm. Okay. Well, he hasn't showed up yet. There we go. I'm, probably, yeah, I'm just going to have to chase him with auto terrorists. There's really not much else I can do. Now he's seeing my bill and he's probably like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, this is, this is going to be a very frustrating experience, guys. I'll, I can tell you guys that much. And also, I, I, need, I need at least 30 headings to kill a Colossus, I think. Like, this is just unpleasant. Okay, we're going to get some more damage on the prism. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there, guys. At some point, we'll get there. Um, I think I might actually have to do an attack. No. Wait, what, what just died? <laughs> oh, 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 guys. Let's go. Yeah, let's freaking go. That's what I'm talking about. Wait, actually, I didn't make a third base yet. Okay. Um, I'll probably have to do some some damage then with my ravens at least. Let's see what he has. Okay, I have I have a pretty decent idea, I think. Um, ravens in the main. I'm actually going to upgrade the range for those. I feel like that would be pretty good. Uh, let's see. I'm going to set my ravens in the main. And then I can go with my hellions in the natural. Like, he's probably going to have... Like if, if, if he's doing the right thing, he will have a lot of Colossus. He could also be making Disruptors, which then would probably be pretty good for me again. I'm actually a bit sad that I made this... Wait, I do have a base. Oh, there it is. Ah, dude. I thought I was going crazy. I really felt like I made one. Okay, well, uh, I want five bases anyway, so that's fine. Now, here we go. This is going to be a nice start. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be able to kill all of these pros, pretty much. There we go. Oh, this is going to be sick. Hey, is he coming back yet? He's coming back now. I can actually wall this off. Let's go. Oh, he did wall that off. That's unfortunate. I mean, I killed all of the probes here. And I'm... Oh, no. Okay, I'm not... I was going to say I'm going to kill all the probes there, too. That was a lie. Uh, do not believe that. Oh, no. Stop it, please. Okay. Oh, if he's, if he's going to attack me, guys, that's going to be terrifying. Yeah, he is going to attack me. He said he was only macro. Why is he attacking me? Come on, man. Okay, this needs to be a PF instantly. That's like one of my only hopes. And then you guys go in there. Let's see. More workers killed. Ooh, this is going to be a rough hold, guys, for sure. This is going to be a rough hold. Like, that PF is not going to finish. Okay, here we go. Now all of these are going to die as well. Woo! This is going to be a game. We're gaming right now. I did kill pretty much all of his workers already. So that's good. I'm going to bring these ravens. Don't kill my raven, please. That would be kind of rude. Oh, that is a bad blink forward. Okay, here we go. No, I miss hotkey them. No, what's happening? Oh, the miss hotkey. I mean, I think I still have enough here, though. But that was uh, very rough there. Oh, the PF. Let's go. The PF popping off. Yeah, I need to kill this Colossus. That was one thing that's really good. I did manage to get the disables on those. So I will be able to kill them. Now my ravens are almost back. I'm going to lose this CC. Okay, can I save those? Please, don't be silly. Okay. I don't know if he has... Um, hmm, this is scary. Yeah, that miss hotkey cost me a lot. But I still do have a good amount of stuff here. To be honest. Okay, if he dives on the PF, that will be really good for us. I don't have enough Hellions to go for this just yet. That's the problem. Let's see. Ha, <laughs> he blinked away the Stalker thinking that would... Yeah, that's funny. Um, I mean, he has four more Stalkers at home. If I wait for long enough, I'm going to get more and more energy on these. And this PF is probably not going to die, I would have to guess. And then I'm going to be basically three base against... I mean, he, honestly, he practically has half a base. But I... He's been probing up, so he probably has a bunch. <laughs> okay. Can I get him? Ooh. Okay, this could be huge. Let's go. We have to chase that and get as much damage as we can. The damage is going to be pretty good. There we go. Going to block his path. Oh. Okay. I only got one auto turret down somehow. I don't know what happened there, but uh, it is what it is. Now, I feel... Like, we have weathered the storm well enough. I actually got the upgrades on my turrets and stuff as well. I don't have the upgrades yet for my Hellions. I feel like I really need those. Yeah, so I'm going to go for my double armory here now. Uh, probably can start making more CCs as well. Or I could counter with the Ravens again. A little bit risky though, because he could be attacking me. Oh, this could actually be a cool one. I counter that with these Ravens and I just leave one at home. 
for the anti-armor missile. Because in all honesty, uh, auto turrets are probably not going to be hitting those stalkers. Like, so far the worst fights are always the ones against the stalkers, to be fair. So, like, I think... Um, yeah, having all these ravens at home, probably not going to do a whole lot. Now, I actually have two, so I can actually get a matrix off. Let's see, he did kill my SCV. Oh, come here, boy. Okay. I think it's looking pretty good. Let's see. Get that. Oh, my upgrade's finished. There we go. Dude, he's, oh, stalkers are so annoying, man. L legit. I, again, when I play Ghost, when I do this, it's just... Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Go get them all down. Probably make some CCs in my main at this point because he keeps denying them. Oh, I, I shifted it on accident. Oops. There we go. And then get some in this base as well. Oh, this, all these pros are gonna die as well. Yo, can you target the batter? There we go. Alright. Okay, he's trying again. Oh, now he actually got fully missiled. Let's go. Oh, this is such a good fight, guys. Yes. 13 supply? I actually killed everything he had with these ravens. He had, he had three probes left. And just these stalkers. But he actually, he actually lost literally everything. Except for these two guys and uh, where's the last guy? There, that guy. All right, how many probes did we kill? 103 workers killed, guys. Um... I think that's probably the first time we killed that many workers. Though I, I didn't actually check in that last macro game we played yesterday, I think. Or two days ago. Um, but yeah, that was awesome. I think we got four dubs. We did get a pretty decent macro game here. It got scary. But in the end, it was, it was you know, we were pretty safe here. So this does actually give me confidence that we will be able to reach higher and higher. Like even at this point, uh, the workers killed. I feel like it's really hard to even keep your workers alive against this. Like if they play Sky Toss, fair enough. But otherwise, Hellions and Ravens can kill a lot of workers. And this was a very successful episode, guys. We climbed an MMR. I probably made you guys believe a little bit more after that uh, loss to a diamond in the last episode. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it very much. Thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys next time. Adios.